Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Hilgers, director of the Pope Paul the St. Paul the Sixth Institute for the Study of Human Reproduction in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm very happy to be with you this evening and particularly to thank you for the magnificent recognition in the Faith and Science Award that you have given to Sue and I. Sitting next to me is my beautiful wife, Sue, who's been with me for a long time, puts up with me. But anyway, she is uh, really terrific. She's a co-developer of the Creighton Model Fertility Care System. It's been literally there from the very beginning of this effort many, many years ago. Dr. Hilders and myself are deeply honored by this receiving this prestigious Faith and Science Award from this organization. And thank you very much. So I've been thinking a lot about um, how NAPRA technology got developed, and uh, I'd like to just share, share a few things with you. Uh, when uh, we first started in this work, our research began actually in 1976, believe it or not, and uh, we developed or discovered um, a, a uniform language that could be applied to a woman's observations uh, with what was then called the Billings ovulation method, but became known then as the Creighton Model Fertility Care System. So this common language, I think, uh, is actually one of the most important discoveries in the field of natural methods of the last century. It doesn't get very much credit for that, but the reason it's so important is because it gave us the opportunity to look at the menstrual and the fertility cycle in a way which is uh, uniform and uh, extremely productive in terms of our uh, increasing our knowledge of various, um, various women's health issues. And so, it's been a tremendous uh, opportunity for us. We developed that early in our work and we began to apply it. And as an obstetrician gynecologist, uh, it was natural for me to have my patients charting their cycles. And everybody charted their cycles who was at least in the reproductive age. And we were very uh, keen on seeing what kind of problems we might observe. Over the next uh, 15 years, we saw cycle patterns which were unique in a whole variety of circumstances, women's health circumstances, women of reproductive or procreative age. And as a result, we were able to um, connect the dots on these things. We, we did a lot of hormone studies, a lot of laparoscopies, a lot of things to be able to, um, ultrasound studies of ovulation. We've actually studied more uh, cycles of ovulation by ultrasound than any place in the world. And so it was very, very valuable. So in 1991, we published a little book called The Medical Applications of Natural Family Planning. The subtitle of that book was A Physician's Guide to NAPRA Technology, and that was the first time that we had used that term. Well, that was 1991. This is almost 2001. And literally 30 years have gone by since NAPRA Technology has been available to us. It wasn't until 2004, though, that a definitive medical textbook was written on this, the medical and surgical practice of NAPRO technology. And so uh, we, um, we were able to share that on a much deeper level with physicians and others in the work over these years. I'm in the process right now, actually, of writing the second edition to that book. It's been, a, it's been a great joy to be able to be participating in this work effort. And here's the final thing that I would like to say about it. Um, only recently have I discovered, for myself even, that what we've discovered is a new subspecialty in obstetrics and gynecology that is related specifically to women of procreative age. If you think about it, uh, those women if they've had severe menstrual cramps, they get put on birth control pills. If they have abnormal bleeding, they get put on birth control pills. 
they long and irregular cycles, they get put on birth control pills. If they have infertility, they're given in vitro fertilization. And many, many people over the years, many women over the years, have become very frustrated and frankly disgusted with this approach to that type of care, which never gets to the cause, never gets to the bottom line or the root causes of what's going on. So uh, as we began to do this work and saw patients, we began to see that uh, women were attracted to it because we got to the root cause. And um, it also dawned on me just recently that while we did call this initially the Pope Paul VI Institute or the St. Paul VI Institute as it had become, we also began to realize as some people told us, they would say, isn't that an awfully Catholic sounding name? And I said, well, it's Catholic, kind of like St. Joseph Hospital is Catholic, which was our teaching hospital at the time. But it's, uh, it's amazing, really, when you think about it, because it's because it was Catholic, because it had an ethical and moral foundation to it, that people were attracted to this work and to this uh, application of medicine to, them, to themselves. If it weren't for those patients, we wouldn't be able to talk about this as much and, and as strongly as we have. So I'm delighted to see that you're going to have this conference. I am grateful for your enthusiasm and your work in this area. So thank you uh, all, and we wish you very much uh, a great set of meetings and lectures, and uh, we hope that uh, this will continue to be a value for you for the rest of your lives. Thank you very much. And may God bless you all very much for all of your work.